Hello and welcome back. Uh, I was talking about the... Maybe let's pull this away real quick. I, I've been talking about this area here. So then that's here. We can kind of see this circle here that goes up around here. Circleish region here. So if we look here, like here, around here, so there, this goes around down this way, towards Yellowstone, so it's just a little below that, Yellowstone's here, this, this line. So just a little below that, the circle boundary. <clears throat> so we see a circle there. But then, notably, we see a circle here. Right here. That's got a boundary here. Let's see where this is. One seventeen forty four point two seven forty four point two seven minus one seventeen point zero. <clears throat> so there's another circle that looks maybe here. It's not really detectable on this map. Like down here, <clears throat> about midway between these two. Looks like it's actually like related, like this boundary here kind of looks related to whatever this was about. Some kind of cross current that this current just couldn't go through and went over and then continued at a greater distance from the source, so it was less pressure, like here versus here. This pressure versus this pressure just wasn't, or this pressure, I guess, wasn't the same so it could continue something of that nature but then it also related to this circle boundary maybe so we got this circle here a bigger circle that goes over to here bunch just a bunch of circles for sure okay But so, it occurred to me, I hadn't really looked at this region, so here's Yellowstone again. There's that point that's kind of notably along this arc. Like Yellowstone has this structure coming out from it. It goes up there and down here, and then it has this distinct connecting arc with that mound there. So like this going down this way, going up this way has a connecting arc. Maybe like here up this way and then back over that way-ish. Wherever exactly to here. From like there. Let's see. 41.8, 115 115.7. 41A1, that's not there, that wasn't, okay, 42.1, So it's generally there, okay, I think I went a little further. So it generally goes up this way and across that way. 
as this arc that's here that then has a circle backing it with smaller circles within the circle very reminiscent of shallograms specifically this shallogram down here somewhere let's see if I can find it this one circle circle and then bigger circle they're overlapping but maybe this circle kind of abuts that circle ish in a similar way and this is like expanding within one system although this is kind of what i'm what i was picturing like yellowstone here with like a thing going out and then the cross band where that mound is like there and then over here maybe like volcanoes like because it's all open over there so over here is that mound that's not <clears throat> not really a gaping hole <laughs> and so it's not producing that although I wonder even if there's like super volcanoes that were over here. I know there were super volcanoes somewhere. So maybe they're kind of related to an aspect of how this like continued through one of the side channels, the bottom side channel towards the south pole maybe. Towards like the direction gravity generally is pushing maybe. on this rock and so maybe earth experiences a similar thing that causes a north and south pole where it has like a actual gravitational field that's pushing it down and creating a south pole and a north pole and so like the energy flows through here had a south pole orient oriented or pre pre preferred flow where like the material built up where the current didn't quite get up to the north pole it take it just takes more energy to go up the ramp or it, it takes less to go down the so it even carves into the next one over here not so much over here probably similar where it has circle circle this time it creates more like that <coughs> bigger lobe that's not so circular anymore this kind of has like a big lobe that extends out somewhat i've interpreted it as like being like actually out like this generally where there's a lot missing so maybe that's something of that nature happened where the philippines were there or yeah yeah, the Philippines were here. The Philippines were exactly in the boundary of this, was the Philippines. Which we just don't see the magnetic anomaly map on them. I mean, it's just so limited. And I think it would also have been this stretch of the Philippines here. Not so much here. Like, this would be, like, Vancouver region where this current coming this way that carved... Something carved through here also carved into here. continued into here carved it between this and this so that was like extending down that way here wrapping around this side literally with with this attached above it all the way over there <coughs> So maybe this has like shallogram type features.
in terms of like, let me find a good example. Maybe something of this nature. Like that portion. Let's see, like one, two, maybe like that. Maybe. And then like over here, maybe, I don't know. I mean, it also has this cross current thing that tends to happen in these. Like for example, at this place. The shallogram wall, where there's a cross current here. This is just like seemingly a very common thing. <clears throat> Even though it's not a shallogram to reference, like I think maybe that might be related to what's going on here. The same mechanism across scales. When it was over here, though. Philippines were right here, so that's like part of the equation. Maybe that's an important part with regard to the flood basalt. I mean, I think at that point it had moved away when the flood basalt's coming in. And maybe that's even why the flood basalt is able to come in, because there's a, it had moved away. So there was actually like a gaping hole of magma that was filling out here, but then like as it filled out here, maybe what happened was initially the ocean was like cool and it was filling in the ocean, but then the ocean got so full of material, like as if as it ballooned into a, a larger radius. Essentially, what happened initially. The mantle, the, the earth was a single landmass. All continents were conjoined. It was punctured here. And then current flowed out in all directions. Until the current got so much pressure under the crust that it fractured the crust. And then at the KT boundary, it broke the crust apart completely into seven continents, and that's when it filled into the ocean. So initially it was filling just underneath the continents, flowing directly across like here, over here, and then skipping all of this that didn't exist, flowing into here, flowing over here, and then flowing into Australia immediately because it was adjacent over here just flowing in a continuous stream without the oceans, but then they broke apart the continents and the oceans then were able to be formed and the earth physically expanded so that the internal pressure was basically able to stabilize with the external pressure as it expanded and it literally underwent a supernova a fractal nature where the rapid expansion began where up until the KT boundary the under pressures were just building and building until the crust broke and then um, the oceans formed but then the the um, Columbia River basalt began around 17 million so my thought is maybe the under pressure was no longer enough to like puncture through the crust again so it essentially it expanded and expanded but as it was doing so the crust was solidifying so new in order to expand, the flow of magma was coming out between, 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 pushing the continents apart, forming these like bands of just like continuously 
new layers that were just adding on until finally it could no longer expand the Earth and it stabilized in terms of its radius, but the current flows were not done and they continued to flow, but because the crust was like solidifying it was no longer allowing the magma to just simply flow up into the ocean and create new ocean floor and so it went from a phase of um, building pressure and flowing underneath the continents to a phase of flowing into the oceans and not into the continents out of underneath the continents really in a lot of ways, even entire slabs sliding out from under the continents. But then the pressure stabilized, and it solidified, and it went to another phase where the current was again flowing under the continents. And in this time, now it's flowing from the mantle puncture hole over here across this way. Uh, let's, let's pull it up here. across this way, up up over this ramp, up this way, across, across, and then it basically follows the path of least resistance through here, here against this, so it's flowing this way, which then this traces to here, and to here, so it's almost like it added some sp some space there. I'm not sure where those two, but anyway, <clears throat> it occurred to me that I had already like mapped these atop one another in my Earth's undercurrents video. So that here we are. Here's that current coming across, and then it basically spans out. And does all the red patterns I put, I think. Maybe not. Probably even these. I'm not sure. Um, but essentially it spans out into this wave feature. Notice it focuses here across and down to... And these are me tracing the, these contours here. And then just putting North America with, like this with the features where essentially they go so here's the dragon feature and here's north america's like abutting it and then this is focus low and we've been talking about this recently and how it approaches big horn so this is pretty like the hess hess rise this stretch here in brown i marked um how it approaches what would have been Bighorn Mountain's uh, node that is basically where this current coming across separates but then remerges and then is like a focal point that then energy radiates around in this eye shape and forms all these rings. And then it divides again and goes down, but like, there it is. <laughs> and then it goes up this way, where it reconnects here. Although I don't know how visible it is over here. Maybe it goes through here and then up this way and kind of stabilizes into that current. And then goes across here and maybe goes up this way, starts following this path and feeds into Iceland. Because it looks like it goes up. 
We've got anything going into here. I guess anything down will go down, maybe, and anything above this level will go up. Maybe. I don't know if that's... Just based on the contours, it's possible. That there's some kind of, like, hemisphere for these currents or something, like, just, like, air flows, how they'll have segments where they go certain ways. I don't know what I'm referring to by name, but... So anyway, what can we glean from this? <laughs> this this current going up this way has basically a maximum boundary here. Hmm. Oh my god. It's like it lifts Hawaii through this current, from the base of this current to the top of the current, all the way to the top of the current, and lodges it at the top of this current's influence, right there. It really happened. <laughs> it's incredible. It's incredible. But Bighorn Mountain's getting focused there. There's a current coming in this way. But this is before they move away. But then it starts to move away. So I kind of turn it, and I'm just wondering if when I turn it, if there will be anything that kind of pops out. Where, like, this current's still flowing into it. Like, but from a different angle. So it was flowing in more appropriately right there from up there down here, but then it turns and then suddenly it's like hitting weird spots. Possibly hitting I don't think that's where the Columbia River basalt is here. I don't think so. Although, interestingly, this is going into the region where this bump would be. So maybe it's like destroying that mound that was like behind the neck of the dragon that it formed behind as another ripple here that just got destroyed in this cross current at this point while wow, this was ca causing this f flood basalt maybe because of pressure here and so it erupted whereas this was able maybe to flow in some reason just by this path, I don't know. Like it was able to flow this way. It didn't run into Bighorn. It kind of flowed through the less resistance, maybe. Then it's moving down here again, kind of in that region where this like bump. Maybe it was there. This bump was. It's missing. Although this is. I mean, I feel like at this point it's just flowing into the ocean. Until until it really stabilizes over there. But then the currents are flowing 
underneath, maybe, and not even following the trends. Because essentially it points at it, it goes across. arcs up this way, around, and just generally points at it. So it's probably coming from there. A flow coming this way that's feeding into Yellowstone. Flowing across. But first it creates the Columbia River Basalt as a large, a small igneous province, I guess. Is that a thing? Small igneous. I guess it called it. Calls it a basalt group. Okay, we got another basalt group up there. Kind of where that flow went up through the river path. Like if. If there's a rotation going this way, like it seems like it went up there into here and brought this material up there. So maybe that's what that's pointing to. The CRM, or, oh yeah, it's still part of the Columbia River basalt. Maybe, uh, never mind then. Sierra Madre. Then there's one there, which is kind of where the, those flows were pointing at. I don't know when that one's thought to have formed. Let's see. Sierra Madre. Flood basalt? I don't know. I probably should have not searched for a flood basalt. Okay, that just didn't work. Let's see. Geology. Renville. Towards the end of the Cretaceous. Okay, let's read this. Towards the end of the Cretaceous, the Laramide and Orogeny increased the activity of magmatism in the area, forming the first major igneous series in the area. This is down here, so we're, look, we're talking about down here. Okay. So there's a current coming in here, and then it wraps around. It runs into this, and is only able to like push through that far, and then it wraps around based on this image, <clears throat> which is when it runs into resistance enough to start to like erupt into the region. Okay, although that's late Cretaceous, Ignis, which makes sense, like late Cretaceous being when that this it's starting to open because that's when the the rapid phase of the supernova begins is at the KT boundary, sixty five million years, the Earth explodes, the crust breaks apart, and then they start to separate, and that undercurrent then starts to flow into places with lower pressure as it moves over here and flows in there, pushing the continents apart. But then... Later on, the current is caused to come over this way and fill in here. Once they were further apart. Okay, so that kind of makes sense. The Ignis series are made up of a formation of plutonic and volcanic rock, which would later be exposed. 
interbedded with these rocks are sedimentary deposit rocks. Center of the range, some of these rocks have been deformed by tectonic forcing that occurred at the same time. The southern part of the range, which that current would probably do, <clears throat> the southern part of the range contains none of the volcanism that is apparent in the northern range, which kind of makes sense if, like, there's an inflowing current that's more, like, vented than it doesn't need to vent. So it like vented in the northern section where it's coming from, and then was not doing the same. None of the volcanism. These formations ended in the Paleocene, so right after the KT boundary, towards the end of the KT, like approaching the KT boundary, and then like early on after. So there's this, it's almost like it's a rocket taking off, and initially it's pushing into the side, but then once it, it takes flight, it just needs to, like, push the general direction still, and it just flows away without the current entering in as much, I guess. Or it just feels enough pressure that it just can't even fill the pores anymore and that just participates in helping it lift off I don't know Eocene volcanism and acidic and rhyolitic formations volcanic rock silica pore intermediate between okay Fine grain, fine grain intermediary rock. So it's kind of like a separator rock, if there is such a thing. Rhyolite is the most silica rich, so that's more of like a anode or cathode, one or the other, where the other type, silica pore, is the other type anode or cathode, maybe, just a thought, intermediate, separator-like, with spatial and temporal variations throughout, most of the gold and silver deposits are in these areas around the KT boundary, which I've expressed how that is literally when the sphere of Hawaii supernova and deposited gold and silver across the Pacific Rim, pretty much and contributed to this. Maybe even the Earth itself supernova and did so. I don't know. In the Oligocene, ash flows became the predominant deposit. Oligocene epoch, 34 to 23. That's odd. That's very odd. So there was volcanism until 55 million and that 56 million and then I forget already what was that 23 33 some it's at least 20 million years later ash flows happen with interbedded lava flows between these ash flows began the second series of high magmatism formations. I wonder if like the eruptions had a delay, like they, it erupted and then 20 million years radiometric dating passes while the like eruptions are falling back down and accumulating and then they break through the resistance of the like soft but cooled overlayer and literally just fracture and then it erupts again and but in a different way where it's like inner bedded lava flows ash flows became the second series like that kind of makes sense to me that the ash would just way too much and it would break this like large flood basalt because it's just it's not able to fall on stable ground it all falls on this like
very large surface area of newly formed crust that's just kind of like ice but the opposite where it's rock and it's cooling but it's not stable enough to support the just massive amounts of weight of the like emissions that are all cooling things that fly out cool in the air and then land on this hard surface and then at some point it actually breaks through that's my thoughts something of that nature okay mid tertiary ignimbrite flare up 40 to 25 million years ago sometimes broken by lava flows that makes me feel like because it says north and western united states It makes me feel like what's happening is the current flow is coming in over here as it pushes, but then as the earth expands, it starts to move back over up through this layer. And then to like here, centered on Yellowstone, or centered up here, basically up here. So it's flowing across here. Creating the flood basalt, but on the way, like an intermediary, this thing, mid tertiary ignimbrite flare up, maybe even ignimbrite is similarly a separator relative to the what's going on here compared to the northern region i don't know like here versus up here with like a separator ignimbrite stretch mid tertiary period where they're like different materials enough The ignimbrite formations in Sierra cover the largest area of any known series, with ten calderas identified in the province. Three of these calderas are in Copper Canyon. I assume here. See where this one is. It could be there too. The flow is coming in here, like below, below the resistance somewhere, and then turning at this thing, running into this resistance, so turning here. I mean, that's kind of, I think it was around here. Oh, what? I don't know, I need to know where the actual place they're talking about was. <laughs> okay, let's see, mid tertiary ignimbrite, mid Tertiary ignimbrite flare up images. I mean, I guess it's there. They... <laughs> oh, interesting.
Okay. Um. I guess I closed that. I guess I closed it. Oops. Where was it? I think it's over here. There we go. Nope. I need the United States. There we go. Okay. So I guess, I guess while this is happening is really not the, um, Missoula flood time yet quite yet. It's building into it, but it's not quite yet. That's what I'm thinking. It's not yet approaching it, maybe, or it's not yet there. Maybe this cross current is contributing to the spiral that's going on there. However, so maybe there's some aspect of it going on already. I don't think it goes like that. It does kind of abruptly bend. Like maybe down over, bending there. <laughs> okay, there's that. There's that circle there. Okay, there's that circle. So it's actually more it's more like an eye. It's more like an eye to the this eye. A string of eyes. Whoa. The diamonds around here. Here's the diamond. Diamond is see or no here. Seemingly, based on this, I have it just off the coast. I don't know when that when these formed. I don't know if they have a name. They must have a name. They're they're just so distinct. Okay, looking at it now, it's not, it's not so much as individual points in it, as much as like parallel lines that have individual points. Parallel lines. What is happening there? I wonder if it's like this bond breaking here, separating somehow, leaving behind 
little like drainage eddies in rows or in points. I don't know. In in unison with other cross current flowing across here. I don't know. Does it Okay, um, why was I looking at this? <laughs> so many things open. Uh, oh, yeah. That's interesting. That's kind of that path we were looking at earlier. Like if it ends up going up this way and ends up ultimately going this way, maybe it would end up also going over here. End up that way. This one I know is like 200 million radiometric dating. Okay, okay, so we pretty much got all these West Coast ones looked at. And then that one's not at the same time. Although, actually, actually, honestly, it's probably, this is probably going on. While the spiral of water is eddying here, there's water going on here, and then the Central Atlantic Magmatic Province going on between those spiral water that's then is sending water this way over there, interacting with this, with this, sending water that way, that way. But, like, there's also the Central Atlantic Magmatic Province going on. I feel like that's contributing to the Carolina Bays, that there's this flow of water that basically wants to get into the ocean that's forming. Because it's, it's not yet, like, open, but it's, like, there's a gap here pretty early on, like around the time of Central Atlantic Magmatic Province. I don't know why I did that, but Central Atlantic Magmatic Province around that time. Had this stuff going on. Probably not the best marking of where it was. Let's see. More, more precision, I guess. That one. So there's a swirl there of water that's then going that way, down, over, up. <coughs> Holy shit, it's almost two o'clock. I gotta go to bed, huh? Oh, sorry, Jack. <laughs> oh my god, I'm not motivated. Not helping. Okay, that did not do what I was hoping. I thought it would zoom out. Make it bigger, I mean. I'm just trying to think real quick if there's any ammonite thing going on here that it might be worth considering in a similar way. How there's all these ammonites across here. Maybe there's an ammonite across here. 
I mean, this is an ammonite here, spiraling up this way, around this way. Hmm. Ammonite spiraling up this way, like this, and then on the back of the ammonite are all these other ammonites over here, as well as Australia is another ammonite. There might be something there. I'll have to just keep it in mind. I'll be back later. Thanks for hanging out. Peace out.